The president is finishing his first year in office, and two influential political reporters say little has changed about the way he's perceived in his job. Mike Allen writes with Jim Vanda High this morning that the president, quote, started 2017 with about 40 percent of the country with him, and he ends 2017 with about 40 percent. He started haunted by Russian interference in his election win, and he ends 2017 pretty much the same way. <laughs> They're calling it the rerun presidency. Mike Allen is co-founder and executive editor of Axios, a digital news site. He launched Axios this year with Vanda High, who helped create Politico 10 years ago. Mike, good morning. Well, thank you. I thought I was here for the nine-minute ad. <laughs> Am I in the wrong block here? You can stick around. What is happening? <laughs> in this whole idea of the rerun presidency, you say Mike, that there are only two people who can change Trump, Trump and Mueller. How do you mean? Well, that's right. And uh, one thing that they told me early on in the campaign, somebody said to me that there are all these stories, oh, like Trump will be different after he's elected, he'll yes. be different after he's inaugurated. Somebody said, if you want to know, and you guys have known that guy, if you want to know one guy who's not changing, it's a 70-year-old billionaire <laughs> with his name on the building. Yeah. And that's Trump. He's not changing and uh, the one person you're right that could totally disrupt their ecosystem uh, ecosystem and ecosystem is Robert Mueller that it's just how is he handling there. that investigation do you think so he's taken the don't worry be happy approach that what we see again and again is the advisor coddling the president right like yesterday your coverage of the national security strategy the book is very serious the speech was very Trumpy and they said here mr. president like you'll enjoy this speech. So with yep. Mueller, they're telling him it'll be fine. And remember, it was going to be over at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Then it was going to be over at Christmas. Now it's going to be over at New Year's. Now the Washington Post reporting uh, Mueller folks expect to go a year. And that's very consistent with our reporting, which is whatever you think Mueller's up to, there's more. There's always more. And we saw that this weekend when we found out that he has tens of thousands of emails from the political leadership and the national security team at the campaign. Imagine what he can do. One of the mailboxes by itself, 7,000 emails. Imagine what a prosecutor can do. What's that, that? going to yeah. do to his ability to govern in the next year, do you think, Mike? Well, that's what they've tried to do is uh, just uh, pretend that it's not there. President Clinton, you guys will remember, was pretty good at compartmentalizing, and he was able to put his investigation aside. Whatever President Trump is good at, compartmentalizing ain't it. It's always on his mind. He likes to talk about it, you see him out. He never attacks Mueller personally, though. You are right. That is that is a great point, that he always goes after the investigation. Mm -hmm. But this is a man who's not known for patience. But they've told him, just cooperate with Mueller, mm -hmm. give him documents, let him have the interviews, and eventually this will wind up in a good place. And uh, Gail, a staff member, pointed out to me that there's one person that uh, uh, the president always wants to punch, mm -hmm. anybody who's about to punch him or might, there's one person who does not have a nickname that's an adversary of the president, and that's Mueller. Huh? Like, we have not heard uh, a Mueller point. nickname. Yeah. And it's, Why do you think that is? They're uh, trying to not antagonize him. Uh, the president might do well to add that strategy to Capitol Hill, maybe not antagonize some Republican senators, but at least he's doing it with this prosecutor. Mm -hmm. So what would happen when Mueller releases his report? What happens after a special counsel? It leads to either charges or a congressional investigation. What's that next step? Yeah, well, no, of course, uh, uh, we have no idea where he's headed. But what we do know from reading the indictments, from looking at what he does publicly, we know that he is willing to uh, go very broad, to go after personal finances. The White House talking point keeps being, oh, he has a very narrow mandate he's no like the opposite is true first of all he has a very broad mandate if you look at the <laughs> yeah. press release it says russia and anything related you well know from your own uh coverage what a prosecutor can do with anything related um so he's going to pull every thread on the sweater we see that from the uh indictments and the the pleas that we've seen so far so we don't know where he's going but this is the so we talked about the inside game of the uh trump lawyers trying to cooperate mm -hmm. the outside game which we've seen covered here is all these Republicans saying, oh, like the investigation is tainted or the investigation is political. Just raise questions so that President uh, Trump can go to his 
people, and you and I were talking about this in the green room, that, that his base is thin. When he comes to 2020, he's going to have a math problem. He barely won. He hasn't added to it. He has to keep those people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the effort to undermine Mueller is so crucial to his long-term survival. Well, Mike Allen of Axios, always good to have you. You're Axios AM, your top 10. Yes. I not only read it online, I then print it out for myself. Yeah. So. You rock. Twice Part of a good breakfast just from CBS <laughs> this morning. So thank you. Hope thank you have you. something to discuss in 2018. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you.